Vercel is one of the most well-known and used companies in the world of web development. Apart from being the creators and maintainers of the Next.js framework, used by TikTok, Twitch, Notion, and many more, they are also one of the most popular cloud platforms used by tons of developers to deploy hundreds of thousands of websites. And a big reason for this, I would say, is because they provide the best developer experience out there. Which is why I was so glad to find an article in their blog that explains how they deploy and serve our websites. What services they they use under the hood and how it all works, which is what this video is about. First, we will learn how they build and deploy websites, and then we will learn how they serve those websites to users around the world. A Vercel deployment can start in two ways, using the Vercel CLI or the Vercel Git integration. When a deployment is triggered, all the deployment code and files are uploaded in a post request to Amazon S3, which is a file storing service. Amazon Web Services, or AWS, will be mentioned a lot in this video, because as we will see, Vercel relies pretty heavily on them. After the files are uploaded to S3, another post request is made to one of Vercel's API endpoints that validates the Vercel JSON configuration file, the identity of the user, permissions, and overall protects for unauthorized access. If it's all good, if the config file is valid and the user is authorized and has all the permissions to deploy, the deployment is then put on a queue and is scheduled for building. For the deployment queue, Vercel uses Amazon Simple Queue Service or SQS. Queue services are often used by microservices or distributed systems because they allow different parts of a backend to pass messages between each other in a structured and orderly way. The queue data structure is a linear collection of items where items are added and removed using a FIFO approach. First in, first out. It is literally like a queue of people at the bank. And Amazon SQS is a queue data structured, but in the cloud and with an API. A queue is a two-side data structure. You add elements to one side and remove elements from another. The service that adds elements to a queue is called the producer, while the service that removes them is called the consumer. In this case, the producer is the service that checks the user for permissions after the code has been uploaded to S3. The service will put a message in the queue that says the project is ready to be built. On the other side of the queue, consuming it, there is a service called the build container that is arguably the most important one. The build container is an Amazon EC2 instance, which just means a server that is managed by AWS Fargate. Because there may be many teams all deploying their websites at once, the deployments queue may be full of deployments that need to be processed quickly, which is why AWS Fargate is needed. AWS Fargate is a service designed to start EC2 instances dynamically as required. If there are tons of deployments in the queue, Fargate automatically is spins up the instances it needs to fulfill the demand. When the instances are no longer necessary, Fargate shoots them down, scaling down as needed. When the build container is launched, a builder script is installed in it depending on what framework is being deployed. As of today, Vercel has builders for 38 different front-end frameworks. They also have something called the Build Output API, which is a specification of a directory structure that, if followed correctly, can make any project or framework be understood and deployed by Vercel. The job of the builder is to take the code that was uploaded to S3 and transform it into a deployment. It will build the project and upload all the resulting static assets, like JavaScript, or CSS files as well as fonts and static pages to another AWS3 bucket for storage. And it will optimize images as well. If the project uses server-side rendering or API routes, the builder will also create AWS Lambda functions, where the code will run in a serverless environment. The only part of the deployment that doesn't use an AWS product are edge functions, used by middlewares that seem to be deployed in Vercel's own infrastructure. While the build is happening, the build container is hitting another API endpoint, and the updating it on the deployment's status. This endpoint is then used by the CLI and the dashboard to let the user know what the status of the deployment is. When the build container is finished, a record is created in a deployment's database with information about the deployment, and the deployment's metadata is uploaded to S3. This information about the deployment will later be used by Vercel to serve the correct website when a user accesses the deployed application URL. But before we learn about how Vercel serves the deployed website, I want to remind you that if you like the way I explain things and you would like to learn to code with me for free, after you finish watching this video, click the link below. There you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js, among many others for free. We have many free courses for all levels, from beginners to advanced. We have two brand new courses, the free Next.js for beginners course and Carrot Market, both updated to the latest version of Next.js. So click the link below after the video is done and I will see you there. When a request comes for a 
URL of a project deployed on Vercel, it will be received by AWS Global Accelerator. AWS Global Accelerator gives Vercel a static IP address that all traffic will go through. When a request comes to that IP address, Global Accelerator will find a data center that is close to the user, that is healthy, and that has the most optimal connection path and lowest latency. Global Accelerator also provides DDoS protection and has automatic failovers, which means that when a region experiences problems, the traffic will be redirected away from that region towards a healthy one. The request will then be routed to Vercel's Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes is a tool for container orchestration. Containers are like virtual servers, and a cluster is a group of many of them. Kubernetes monitors that the servers are running well. It restarts the failed ones. It scales the number of servers based on demand. It rolls out software updates to the servers and basically manages them all. As a Kubernetes service, Vercel uses Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service or E. KS. When the request enters the Kubernetes cluster, it is checked by a firewall to block malicious requests. And if it all looks legit, it is routed to a virtual machine that serves as a reverse proxy. A reverse proxy is a server that sits in front of one or more servers. When a request comes in, the reverse proxy figures out what the user wants and talks to the appropriate server on behalf of the user. The user does not talk to the server directly. Instead, the reverse proxy sends a request and gets a response from the real server and gives that to the user. User. Reverse proxies are awesome because they can provide load balancing, caching, SSL encryption, and protection from attacks since the real IP address of the real server is never revealed to the user. So when the request enters Vercel's reverse proxy that is running in a virtual machine, the reverse proxy will figure out what the user is asking for and what is the deployed application the user wants to see by searching on the deployment database and getting the deployment metadata. The proxy will first try to see if what the user is looking for is in the cache which means that it was already asked by another user before. If it is in the cache, then the proxy will reply with that. If it isn't in the cache, the proxy will either give the user a static asset hosted in S3 if the user is looking for a JavaScript, CSS, font or HTML file. If the user is asking for a server-side rendered page or hitting an API route, the proxy will call one of the serverless AWS Lambda functions that the builder created before. If the user is asking for an image, the proxy will call the image optimizer server and optimize it on the fly. And if the request is to a middleware, the proxy will run it as well. Those responses, when possible, are put in the cache. So when another user asks for them again, the proxy can reply in a shorter time. So to recap, when you deploy to Vercel, your code and file are uploaded to a bucket in AWS S3. An API endpoint checks the deployment and checks you to see if you can deploy and are legit. If all the checks are good, the deployment will be put in a queue managed by AWS SQS. In the other side of the queue, there is a consumer EC2 server managed by AWS Fargate that will detect what project you are trying to deploy and install a builder script to deploy your project. The builder script will generate all the static assets your project needs, JavaScript, CSS, fonts, and HTML files, and put them in another AWS 3 bucket. If your project has API routes or server-side rendered pages, the builder will transform those into AWS Lambda functions. It will also optimize the images and create the middleware functions that are not deployed in AWS. When it is all done, the builder will create a record in a deployments database and save the deployment metadata to S3. That is to deploy the project. To serve the project, the request of the user will first hit a static IP provided by AWS Global Accelerator that will find the best data center to route the request to. Then the request will enter a Kubernetes cluster managed by AWS EKS where it will be checked by a firewall and allowed to continue if all looks legit. If all looks good, the request will go to a virtual machine running a reverse proxy. The proxy will get the information of the application the user is looking for from the deployment database and the deployment metadata uploaded to S3 by the builder in the deployment. After the reverse proxy figures out what the user wants, it will first search for it in the cache. And if it isn't there, depending on what the user is looking for, the proxy will retrieve one of the static files that were uploaded to S3 earlier. Or it will run an AWS Lambda function, a middleware function, or run an image optimization. Then it will respond to the user with that and when possible, will save that response in the cache for a faster response later. That is it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me in
and researching and creating quality content every week. So please don't forget to hit that button. Let me know in the comments what do you think of Vercel's deployment architecture. I think it's so cool how they use AWS services that we all have access to and how by putting them all together in such an awesome way, they created one of the best developer experiences and one of the most recognized companies in the web development world. Thank you for watching as always. Onjana kamsahago, sana hamida. See you on the next one. Dame bye bye.